Hi Year 12s, I'm going to go through one question that does area between a curve and a line. Okay, um, so we're given figure 2 and it shows a sketch of part of the curve with equation y equals 10 plus 8x plus x squared minus x cubed. Okay, the curve has a maximum turning point at A. Alright, so this is the maximum point. And our first task is to use calculus to show that the x coordinate of the maximum is 2. Okay. So we just need the x coordinate and it's 2. And it tells us to use calculus. So that means we either differentiate or integrate. So we're going to, we're finding a maximum. As soon as we hear that, we think differentiate. Okay. So I've got y is equal to 10 plus 8x plus x squared minus x cubed. So I'll move that so we can see it a bit better. So we want to differentiate this. So differentiating 10 is 0. Differentiating 8x gives us 8. Differentiating x squared gives us 2x. Differentiating x cubed gives us 3x squared. So we know that we can get minimums and maximums at when the gradient is zero okay so we've now got a quadratic that we need to solve so then it will be very useful to have a calculator OK, so you might want to think of using the equation solver, but actually I'm going to go straight to the graph, OK, because that's going to help me. So I'm going to delete what's there and I'm going to type in the equation of my graph. So 10 plus 8x plus x squared minus x cubed. OK, I'm going to sketch it. So at the minute my axes aren't very helpful, so I'll go view window and let's just go standard at the minute to give me a basis. Okay, so I can see I've got part of my graph. I think I'm going to adjust it, so I'm going to go up a little bit. There we go. So um, view window, I'm going to go from, say, minus 5 to 7 on the x-axis, and my y-axis, I'm going to go from, yeah, minus 2 will be fine, up to 25. Let's have a look. That's a bit better. I can see what's going on now. Right, um, so we want to find out where the maximum's happening. So I can do G solve and then I can say maximum, please. OK, and that will automatically give me X is 2. And if I instead do G solve and do minimum, that gives me that X is, it's hard to see here, but minus 4 thirds. And so I know that when I solve that quadratic, I will get X equals 2. And x is minus four thirds. So that means it came from some brackets that would rearrange to make uh, from x equals two to zero. So that's x minus two. Okay. And this one would rearrange the brackets to make minus four thirds. So if we multiply by three, so we've got three x and add four. So now, at the minute, this isn't going to give me the right sign for the minus 3x squared. So I'm going to swap these round and have 2 minus x. So that will factorise. Let's just check. We've got 2 times 4 is 8. We've got minus x times 4, so minus 4x, plus 6x, so that works, and minus 3x squared. OK. Now, I had to put that method in because if I read the question, it said, show that. And that is a command phrase, isn't it? So show that means that we have to fully justify our answer.
Okay, so now we've got these two, but we have to show that we have maximum at x is 2. This helps us find turning points to distinguish between minimums and maximums. We find the second derivative. Okay, so the second derivative will give us 2 minus 6x. And then we want to find it when x equals 2. The second derivative is equal to 2 minus 6 times 2. So that's going to be negative 10, which is less than 0. Therefore, we have a maximum at x equals 2. And we didn't have to rule out, we didn't have to say anything about a negative one because we can see that a is where x is positive. Okay. So now we can look at the next part of the question. So it says this region R um, is shaded, is bounded by the curve. So we've got a curve here. The y-axis over here and the line from O to A, where O is the origin. Okay, so I'm going to put on the information we've just worked out. So we've just worked out that that is 2. Okay, if we want to find, um, so it says using calculus again, find the exact area of R. So when it says exact, we're going to have to not just rely on the decimals on our calculator. Okay, we're going to have to do some work by hand. So if we want to find the area, we could do the area under the curve, so between the curve and the x-axis, and we can take away this big triangle. Okay, so we're doing big curve minus triangle, and that will give us the bit that we want, r. Okay. So that's our strategy. Now, it will be very helpful to know how high the triangle is if we want to use half base times height. And if we didn't, the other way of doing it is doing is doing the um, upper curve, take away the lower curve. Okay. And we have an equation for the top curve, but we need an equation for the bottom curve, which is very simple because it's just going to be y equals something x goes through the origin. All right. But for that, we'd still need that y value. So let's find the y value. So we've got that the maximum happens when x is 2. And that's going to be uh, y is we have to substitute back in here. So 10 plus 8 times 2 plus 2 squared minus 2 cubed. Right, well, I can't be bothered to type that. So if I just look at my calculator again and I do G solve and I want the maximum again, then it tells me that Y is 22. Okay, so let's put that into our diagram. So we're doing, we've got this curve from 0 up to 2 and we're taking away this triangle from 0 up to 2 and we know that the height is 22. So if we want to do the triangle separately we would do a half times the base times the height so that's going to be 22. Okay for this part we need to integrate from 0 to 2 and that would be our equation. So 10 plus 8x plus x squared minus x cubed dx. I haven't left much space there. All right. And then we'd be adding and um, subtracting that bit to give us region R. OK. Um, so let's work this method out. And then we'll look at if we were doing upper takeaway lower curve instead. So. To find this area, we need to first integrate. So we get 10x, and then we add the power and divide by the new power. So that's going to be 4x squared. We add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. And for the next one, we add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. And we need to substitute in 2 and 0. Okay. 
So when we've got to this point, we need to substitute in our top limit, which is when x is 2, and then subtract the bottom limit. So we've got 10 times 2 plus 4 times 2 squared plus 2 cubed over 3 minus 2 to the 4 over 4. And then we'd be subtracting. And if you put 0 into any of those terms, you just get 0, don't you? OK, so we can type all those numbers in carefully and work it out. Um, or if we wanted to, oops, we could use G-solve, press F6 and use integrate. And I want to integrate um, from 0. So I've just done 0 and then type in 2. That's it. And so that gives me 34 and 2 thirds. It's all above the x-axis, so that would be the area. 34 and 2 thirds. OK, so then we can do 34 and 2 thirds, take away 22. That's going to give us 12 and 2 thirds for R. And you could give it as a top-heavy fraction if you prefer. Remember, if you prefer for integrating, if you went to the Run menu, you can use math and then there's the integral there and you can type in the original thing that you wrote down for the area here and it should give you the same answer for 34 and two thirds. OK, so I did say that I would do it in, as well if we're going to do, as I wrote on here, the top curve take away the bottom curve. So let's look at doing that strategy. So I know that my top curve is the cubic but my bottom curve what would that be so we know now that this point is 222 so we want to know a curve that goes through 0 0 a line that goes through 0 0 and 222 so it's going to be so y is equal to let's put it over here m x so let's put the 2 and 22 in there so we've got 22 is equal to 2 m um, m times 2, so m so m has got to be 11. OK, so now I've got my curve, y equals 11x. OK, so when I'm doing my integration, top curve minus bottom curve, and you put in, it's the integral from 0 to 2, top curve was 10 plus 8x plus x squared minus x cubed. Take away the bottom curve is y is 11x. So I could slightly simplify that before I integrate because I've got 8x minus 11x. So 10 minus 3x. OK, and then we integrate as before. We just have a slightly different thing here. So we've got 3x squared over 2. And we still have limits of 2 and 0. Then we substitute in our limits. So we have to write this out if it's a show that or show detailed reasoning or determine or find exact area. But we can then make our calculator do the hard work. So I'm going to go back to the graph menu and draw the graph but actually I'm also going to draw the graph of 11x okay and then if you choose G solve and F6 integrate and we've got a bit of a mixed thing here so we go mixed okay oh it's being a bit slow so we want to do the integral below the blue one so I'm going to at the minute it's selected y2 so I'm going to go up so it's selected the blue one. OK, and we want to start at 0 and we want to end at 2. And then we wait and there we go. It's found that area. So it gives us 2 and 2 thirds, which is what we got before. So that is, sorry, 12 and 2 thirds. All right, which is excellent news. OK. Right, so hopefully that's given you an idea of some different approaches and you can mess about a bit with the G-Solve 
integration button to get the correct area.